Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and today we are gonna be making a ton of bone broth or chicken broth or chicken stock. They're all basically the same thing. Today I went to Costco and I bought four rotisserie chickens. I did this because this is a very affordable way to make a bunch of chicken stock. Each one of these chickens is like $5.49 or something, so you really can't beat that price. Ideally, in an ideal world, I would be buying organic chickens, but right now my husband and I are on a budget. So one Costco hack when you're buying your rotisserie chickens at Costco, if you wanna get the best price per pound, look for the chickens that are actually touching the top of the lid. So I made sure I did that with all four of my chickens. Obviously my husband and I cannot go through the meat of four chickens in a week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off all the meat from these bones and I'm gonna package them up in individual packages and I'll leave some in the refrigerator and most of it will go in the freezer. So this is kind of doing two things for me. One, we're gonna be making chicken stock with the bones and the skin. And two, I'm gonna have a bunch of pre-cooked chicken in the freezer to make my life easier in the future when I'm gonna be making meals. Once we get all this bone broth made, I'm gonna show you how to pressure can it so that you can put chicken stock on your pantry shelf. Now, if, if you don't have a pressure canner, that's fine. You can freeze it. All you wanna do is take the skin off. I like to make my bone broth with the skin because that's gonna add a lot of flavor. And then we're gonna take all the meat off the bones and we're gonna put that in a bowl. It's a lot easier if you do this when the meat is still warm on the chicken. So I'm wearing gloves. These are brand new garden gloves. I went ahead and put them on because it was starting to bother my hands. I have super sensitive skin. A lot of times what I do when I roast a whole chicken is I will save the bones in the freezer. When I have a few chickens worth of bones in the freezer, then I'll go ahead and make this. But I don't have any chicken bones in the freezer right now. So that's why I went ahead and did this cheat by buying these rotisserie chickens. Don't forget to save the juice that's at the bottom of each container. That is a great flavor. So we've got a whole bowl of chicken here. This is a ton of chicken, actually way more chicken than I thought I was gonna get from four chickens. So we'll package that up in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get this stock going. So I have a few things here that we're gonna be adding to the stock. The first thing is some carrot peels. Anytime I peel carrots, if they're homegrown carrots, I don't worry about peeling them, but if they're store-bought carrots, I do peel them, and I save all the carrot peels, and that's what I use to make my stock with. So we have two bags of those. If you don't have carrot peels, you certainly could use just whole carrots. This is some homegrown celery that I'm gonna put in here. And then in this bag, I have onion peels in the bottom here, and these are leek tops. No, oh, making a mess. I love to save my vegetable scraps for making stock. It makes making stock almost free because you would just throw the bones away, and these are scraps that I wouldn't even give to my chickens. I would give the carrot peels, I guess, to my chickens, but the onion peels would just be tossed or put in the compost. So it makes making your own broth basically free. If you don't have any extra veggies to put in your stock, you certainly don't need to. I've made stock many times where it's just the bones and water. I like to reuse my freezer bags that hold my vegetable scraps. All I'm gonna do is put these back in the freezer and as I have vegetables, I'll just keep adding vegetable scraps to these bags. There's no reason to throw these out because they were holding vegetable scraps and they will be holding vegetable scraps. The only thing is I do is I store it in the freezer. We got it. Yeah. So we are gonna be making our bone broth in this roaster pan. This is a 22 quart roaster pan. I'm gonna link this down below. I love it because I don't have to use my stove for it. I don't have to worry about going to bed and it, you know, boiling over on the stove or anything. I can just do it in here. And it's way bigger than a crock pot. Most crock pots are like seven to eight quarts. So I can make a lot of stock at one time. But note to self, as you saw, have your insert in here before you put the water in because it gets very, very heavy. So we're gonna add just a couple more ingredients before we turn this on to cook for about 24 hours. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of salt. You can use any kind of salt if you're not canning this. If you're gonna be canning it, you wanna make sure you avoid iodized salt. This is pink Himalayan salt and I buy this on Amazon in bulk and I can link this down below as well. So we'll add three tablespoons. Some people don't like to add their salt when they make their stock, but I do. And then we're gonna add a few tablespoons of black peppercorns. You don't need to grind these peppercorns at all because we're gonna be straining this. I personally don't add any garlic when I make my stock. I feel like it overpowers the whole flavor profile. And now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love garlic, 
but garlic in stock is not my favorite. I like to make sure I can add that garlic flavor into whatever dish I'm making. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a stir to get some of that salt and peppercorns kind of mixed in. And then we're gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna turn it on. I just want you to be encouraged that this is easy and you can do it a million different ways. There's really no wrong way to do it. Now, unless you're canning it, you have to follow very specific canning instructions, but if you're just making stock and freezing it or just making stock to use it right away, there's no real wrong answer. So we're gonna let this go for about 24 hours. So I have a few quart freezer bags here and that is about enough for one meal for my husband and I, so that's probably perfect. So I'm gonna get them all packaged. And just like that, out of those four chickens, we have five quart bags worth of chicken for future meals that I'm gonna go ahead and label and stick in the freezer. I did try to make sure there was a little bit of a combination of dark meat and light meat in each one of these packages. So we are back in the kitchen, it's the next day. It's actually about 2.30, so it's been less than 24 hours that I've had this chicken broth going. And I was actually gonna go out and film a garden tour video and then come in and can this, but my neighbor is mowing his lawn, so I can't film a garden tour video right now. So I figured what I'd do is come in and get the first batch of chicken broth canned up. Now this broth could have probably gone for longer, but like I said, I'm in a hurry. And one way to tell if it's done is if you find one of the bones and you just gently push on it. And if the bones break apart like that, the broth is gonna be perfect. Now, if you're not pressure canning your chicken broth, that's totally fine. I just got my pressure canner last summer, and what I would do is I would freeze my chicken broth. This is the chicken broth here. I would ladle it into jars, let it cool absolutely completely. I would freeze my chicken broth in mason jars, and I would fill it about an inch below where the jar starts to curve up because if you're gonna get a jar that's gonna break in the freezer, it's because you filled it too full and when the broth expands, it cracks the jar or it's because you put warm broth into a cold freezer and the shock breaks the glass. But we're not gonna to freeze today, we're gonna to pressure can, so let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to pressure can in my pressure canner and at my elevation. Please check your pressure canner's manual to make sure that you're pressure canning in your canner correctly. So let me bring you down close, I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm a no fuss, no muss type of person, and I'm gonna to try to make this as easy on myself as possible. I have seven jars out because that is how many jars will fit in my pressure canner at one time. I did run these through the dishwasher before I use them. That's my favorite way of prepping and sterilizing my jars. You don't actually technically have to sterilize your jars if you're pressure canning, but it is good to have them nice and clean. And I've got a canning funnel here and then just a small sieve here. I am using a fat separator to pour my broth into my jars. You can see that there's a layer of fat on here. You don't want that in your jars. Fat can actually affect your sealing when you're pressure canning. So there might be a little bit that gets into the jars, but I want the majority of it not. So I'm gonna use this, and the reason it separates the fat is the fat stays at the top and the spout is at the bottom, so you're pouring out mostly just broth. And all I'm doing is pouring it through this little colander. This is also warming up our jars because this broth is extremely hot. We want the glass jars to warm up before we put them in the pressure canner. I already have my Presto pressure canner on the stove getting ready for us. It's heating up. I put three quarts of water in my Presto pressure canner and a good splash of distilled vinegar. The distilled vinegar is not necessary, but what it does is it helps prevent water deposits from forming on your jars. If I'm gonna spill and make a mess, it's gonna spill from the bottom of this. So I'm trying to keep the jars that I'm filling really close to my pot so that I can have the corner of this still going into my pot so we don't lose a bunch of this beautiful broth. Now I wanna keep this chicken pat. This is definitely not gonna to go to waste. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a bowl over here you can see with another colander. And when I get close to the bottom of emptying this fat separator, I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right into here and we're gonna save all this chicken fat. Chicken fat is extremely flavorful. We don't use it a ton here in the US, but in the Jewish community, it's super popular, and it's what's referred to as schmaltz. I wanna leave one inch of headspace on these jars. One of the reasons it has such this dark, rich color is because we use the onion peels, and I think because we use the leeks. Now what we wanna do is we wanna wipe the rims off with a little bit of distilled vinegar, the reason we wanna do this is we wanna make sure we ensure a nice seal. And because there is a little bit of fat in the chicken broth, we just don't want anything to get in the way of that seal. 
And while you're doing this, just make sure you feel that there's no chips or nicks, which this one actually has a chip in it. So I'm gonna get rid of this jar and I am gonna go ahead and mark this jar so that I know and I don't use it again for canning. But I can use this jar for spices or some storage or something like that. You see that little nick right there? But this jar is a no-go. You see that little nick right there? So I didn't notice that earlier. So this one has to go. And this one is good. So let's go ahead and get that content into here. And there we go. We're gonna put a brand new lid on each one of these and a ring. I can hear that my pressure canner is starting to warm up, which is good, because we want the jars and the water about the same temperature. Another thing you wanna look for is you wanna make sure there's no dings or anything in your ring, which it's hard to see on camera, but there is a ding right here in this one, so I'm not gonna use this one. The reason is because you want nice, even pressure, and if there's a ding in it, then it's gonna put wonky pressure on one part of the lid. This water is just at a very, very gentle simmer. You don't wanna put hot broth in a glass jar and then put it into cold water. Because the temperature difference is too much and it'll shock the glass and you'll break your jar. So now I'm gonna put the lid on the pressure canner. So I'm gonna turn the stove up to a medium to medium high heat. What I want is the water to start to boil pretty rapidly in there. And there's this little vent here and I want steam to be spewing out of this vent for 10 minutes. So I'll show you what it's like when the steam comes out of here. While I'm waiting for this to vent and while it's canning, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish straining all the chicken broth so that when this canner load is done, we can go ahead and just get that broth right into jars and right into the canner. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is venting now. It's actually easier to see it up here. There is steam coming out of this vent and I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 10 minutes. So it's been venting for 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is put the weight on it. And all I have to do is put the weight on it. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna force the pressure to build up in this pressure canner. I need the dial to reach 11 pounds of pressure and stay at that for 25 minutes for quart jars. So we'll just watch this pressure build. So while I was waiting for my pressure can to vent, I went ahead and strained all the bones and the veggies out of the broth. And I'm gonna keep this on warm so that it's ready to go directly into the jars, directly in the canner when we do our second batch. But when I was doing that, I picked out the long bones. There wasn't that many because most of the bones actually totally disintegrated. But I had this thought, and tell me if I'm completely crazy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save these bones and I'm gonna dry them in the oven at like 150 degrees until they're completely dry. And then I'm gonna powder them up. There's no meat on these. I'll make sure there's no meat on it. And then powder them up and make my own bone meal. I know that's kind of weird, but bone meal is something that a lot of people put around their tomatoes because tomatoes need a lot of calcium and there's a lot of calcium in those bones. And so I was wondering if I could make my own. So what I decided is I'm gonna go ahead and dry them, but I'm gonna wait until this video comes out before I put them around my tomatoes because you can tell me if I'm completely crazy, completely off base, or if this is actually kind of a good idea. I had the stove turn on a little too high, so it got up to 15 pounds of pressure, which is fine. I have to keep that gauge at 11 pounds of pressure or higher for 25 minutes. If at any point it dips below 11 pounds of pressure, I have to start those 25 minutes over. So I wanna make sure I keep a close eye on this. So the timer has gone off, so we are gonna turn the oven completely off. Stove, not oven. <laughs> and I'm gonna let this dial go all the way down to zero. I am not gonna to attempt to touch it, open it, cool it, um, do anything with it, just let it naturally come down to pressure and cool completely. So to review, I spent about $20 on four chickens, and with those four chickens, I got five quart size bags of meat that I put in the refrigerator and the freezer, but I also got these 13 quarts of bone broth, and this was basically free because I used vegetable scraps, a little bit of salt and pepper, so I did have to pay for the salt and pepper, I guess, and then plus the cost of the canning lids, and I pay about 20 cents right now for a canning lid, so that's 20 cents for a whole quart. If I was to buy a quart of bone broth at the store, I'm looking at anywhere from like $3 to $5, depending on if I buy you know stock in a carton or actual bone broth in the freezer. So this definitely is a great deal. So if you've never made your own chicken stock or anything like that, I hope you give it a try. It's so, so easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this content and you wanna see more of it, go ahead and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye guys, have a great evening.